the latest moment to highlight Scotland's stark divide. Supporters of independence and a smaller number of opponents holding rival flags and banners outside the Scottish Parliament, which today was dealt a major blow. Nicola Sturgeon had set the date for next October, but this morning it was over. The referendum the Scottish Parliament was planning without Westminster's consent will not happen, wouldn't have been lawful, the judgment of the UK's highest court. So this ruling confirms that the notion of the UK as a voluntary partnership of nations, if it ever was a reality, is no longer a reality. The Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. The Supreme Court spelled it out. The powers are held in Westminster. And the present incumbent of number 10 seems to have no intention of handing them over. Will he at least be honest and confirm that the very idea that the United Kingdom is a voluntary union of nations is now dead and buried? Well, Mr Speaker, let me start by saying we respect the clear and definitive ruling of the, on the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. And what I would say to the Honourable Gentleman, that, uh, firstly, I am looking forward to also seeing uh, the moderator of Scotland tomorrow. Uh, and I think that the people of Scotland want us to be working on fixing the major challenges that we collectively face, whether that's the economy, supporting the NHS or indeed supporting Ukraine. Ahead of the 2014 independence referendum, David Cameron's government transferred the powers to the Scottish Parliament to hold a vote. Plan A was same again, but that's getting a red light from the UK government, despite a pro-independence majority in Holyrood. Pushing on regardless was Nicola Sturgeon's Plan B, now judged not lawful. So what's Plan C? Nicola Sturgeon is not giving up. She's going to try another way. And she said she will treat the next general election as if it was an independence referendum. Now, her opponents have already said they're not doing that. And by almost everyone's admission, it's a long way from the internationally recognized referendum that was held in 2014 and that Nicola Sturgeon wanted to hold again. Mr. Minister, you have always said that a referendum must be lawful and legitimate. Do you now level with the Scottish people and accept that the de facto referendum you were proposing would not be lawful because the Supreme Court had ruled on legality and would not be legitimate because the opposing side do not give their consent? Uh, no, but if, if you've listened to everything I've said, a referendum is my preferred option for, for all the reasons I've set out. But if a referendum is blocked, there has to be another way for the Scottish people to have their say. Labour are saying, move on. Absolutely, Scotland has a right to choose, but Scotland doesn't want a referendum right now. Scotland doesn't support independence right now, but neither do they support the status quo. People want change across this country, and Labour has to be that change, and I believe Scotland will lead the way in helping to elect a UK Labour government. You've just told me what the people of Scotland want. Wouldn't the best solution be to actually ask them? Well, look, you've seen that in poll after poll. You've seen that in election after election. What might voters make of a general election come de facto referendum? If you could just put your hand up nice and clearly, if you'd be leaning yes to independence. Oh, got two, yep. Two years ago, we looked for switchers among those who voted no in 2014, a key group the SNP is trying to win over. How is social worker Anne from Paisley feeling today? I couldn't get a hospital appointment there for nearly 10 months. As being a person suffering with cancer in the past and having issues, reoccurring issues, couldn't get a hospital appointment. People are interested in eating, staying alive, staying warm, having homes insulated so that they can afford to get through the winter. That should be Nicola Sturgeon's priority, not a referendum. John from Hamilton, in the red, was once against independence and is now even more certainly for it. Things have changed. You know, this once in a lifetime, you know, vote. Things have changed dramatically. As a, uh, and attending, I think the UK government tends to shy away from the Brexit vote. I mean, Scott, Europe was very much, you know, an integral part of Scotland was a very much, you know, and vice versa of Europe. In time, we'll see if voters' priorities are the same as Nicola Sturgeon's. Is a de facto referendum a necessary step or a misstep? The answer could determine the next election in Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon's political future.
Well, in an exclusive poll, signed out now for Channel 4 News, conducted after the Supreme Court decision, we asked a nationally representative sample of 1,006 voters in Scotland, 412 of whom voted SNP in the last general election. Would you vote SNP at the next general election if a victory for them could lead to Scotland leaving the UK? 50% voted yes, 33% voted no. And 51% voted yes and 33% voted no when asked if their vote should be used as a mandate to negotiate independence. But when asked what's most important to them, a quarter said Scottish independence, with just over 60% citing the Scottish economy and its public services. Well, I'm joined now by the leaders of the Scottish Conservative and Labour parties, Douglas Ross and Anna Sawa. But first, let's talk to the Scottish Government's Constitution Secretary, Angus Robertson. Angus Robertson, when do you think that the Scottish people have said no today? There have been four consecutive prime ministers and now the Supreme Court saying no to a referendum. Are you ever going to take no for an answer on this? Uh, no, we're not, because we have a mandate, and that mandate came from the Scottish people in last year's Scottish Parliament elections. Not only did the SNP, and for that matter the Greens, win the election on that mandate, but we actually have the biggest majority ever in the Scottish Parliament. So um, opinion polls are always very interesting, whether the, the news is good or, or less good, but what really, really matters is elections and election results. And we were elected to deliver a referendum during the first half of this parliamentary term. And we've sought to do that in the same way as occurred uh, for 2014, which is the UK government and the Scottish government recognising a democratic decision had been taken, allowing a referendum to go forward and that we can get on with it. Unfortunately, what we are, what we are confronted with is democracy denial from the other political parties that lost the election and not giving right. people in Scotland the lost, chance to... you lost the last referendum, but you love carrying on talking about independence because it's, it distracts from your records on other issues. Here in government, your schools are lagging behind well, England. If that, if, You've got the highest waiting times if, in the if, NHS now on record. Yeah. You don't want to talk about that. You want to talk well, about independence. If, if, if people were so unhappy with how Scotland is governed, then we wouldn't have won eight, uh, eight elections in a row. Uh, let, let's well, deal... Let's deal in this scenario. No, we, you're talking about the last referendum, and I you're am. correct. We didn't win a majority in the last referendum, and what has happened subsequent to that is we've had a Brexit referendum and Scotland's been taken out of the European Union against our wishes. We had an election last year in Scotland. This was the biggest issue in the election campaign, and we had a record majority elected to the Scottish Parliament. And I know it's difficult for the losing parties to hear these facts, but in a normal democracy, the government do what the people have instructed their MSPs or MPs to do. We have a mandate. We should be getting on with it, not facing democracy denial uh, from the UK parties. Do you regret taking this to the Supreme Court? Because it was a gamble that you lost, really, wasn't it? No, I don't regret taking it to the Supreme Court because we now have clarity. We have clarity that there is not a route using uh, the UK um, uh, 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 the UK government route to getting a Section 30 order. We have clarity that we now cannot go forward with a referendum voted on in the Scottish Parliament. And unfortunately, that leaves us with no option but turning to the next Democrat uh, 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 option that we have, which is the next general election. But the question for the other political parties is how many elections do the SNP have to win? How many times do people have to return a majority of the Scottish Parliament for people to actually have their say? Are we living in democracy? Are we living in a voluntary union? Because and if you from don't today's. Get a majority at the next election of Scottish voters, the majority of Scottish voters, that's curtains. You can't do a referendum. You can't demand independence again, can you? That's it. Right. Well, what normally happens is it's the people who decide that, and the people have decided that we should have a referendum and that we should be able to choose. I'm saying if you don't future. get a majority of Scottish votes in the forgive, next general forgive, election, for, forgive me, as somebody's been involved in now eight SNP victories back to back, I'm not going to accept the premise with all humility. You cannot be certain about any result in an election. But you've but never got over fifty percent. Actually, it's not true that the majority has not been returned to the Scottish Parliament, or indeed, uh, or when the votes have been counted, uh, the people have not cast their votes in favour of independence. What, what should we should all be agreed on as Democrats is that when there is a big and unresolved question as there is, when we have a government here elected with a mandate that a referendum should take place, that other political parties should respect that, especially those that lost the election. And the last, ele the last election in Scotland was lost by the Conservatives and the Labour Party okay. that were opposed to a referendum. You, you, you've made that point repeatedly. I want to come back to my point about the your record in government here because our poll today taken after that supreme court ruling a vast majority 
what of people we serve, Dave, want you to focus on the economy and public services, not independence. Well, people can have a number of thoughts at the same time. It's entirely possible to get on with all of the important issues of the day and secure the best constitutional outcome for the country. One is not dependent on the other. What is, however, important is that in a democracy that we have the option to choose whilst dealing with all the other issues of the day. I know that's very uncomfortable for the other political parties. They opposed a referendum and lost. We were in favour of a referendum and we won. And so long as we have any aspirations to be actually living in a democracy, we should respect the views of the people. And right. incidentally, okay. for the benefit of viewers elsewhere in the UK, this is quite important. Up until today, we have been labouring under the illusion that the United Kingdom is a voluntary union. Today we learnt it is not a voluntary union. Well, let me put that directly to the Conservative leader here. Uh, Angus Robertson, thanks very much. Douglas Ross now. Um, well, let's put that point. This is no longer a voluntary union, is it? Well, it absolutely is. And the record of that is the 2014 referendum, where the people of Scotland could have chosen to have left the United Kingdom, but they decided by a significant majority to remain part of the United Kingdom, not to support Angus's plans for separation. But I, I have to pick up Angus saying that the last Scottish Parliament election, the main issue was Scottish independence. It wasn't. Uh, you can laugh, Angus, but Nicola Sturgeon told us it would not be about independence. It was about COVID and COVID recovery. Nicola Sturgeon even told voters to give her their support and it wouldn't be taken as a vote for independence. So Angus is now rewriting history by saying that it is. But our poll showed after the Supreme Court ruling that a majority would vote SNP at the next general election to give them a mandate for independence. You can't ignore that, Well, well you? I think you also said, if I heard you correctly, that SNP voters at the last election, not all of them, would continue to support the SNP if it meant simply voting for another independence referendum. And I think where the poll is absolutely spot on, and the question I put to Angus in the Scottish Parliament today is, surely our priorities should be dealing with the cost of living crisis, the global issues that are affecting us, the health service here in Scotland, Scotland, right. our education system. And, we are speaking okay. the night before teachers in Scotland are going to strike for and, the first and, time and in Angus 40 Robertson's years. And Angus point was that you can do both things at the same time. But they're time. not. That's but the problem. They are distracted by from government by their obsession no with now, independence. What is it? Four consecutive prime ministers have said no to a referendum. The more you do that, the more you're acting as a recruiting sergeant for independence, right? Well, absolutely not, because the polls haven't shifted significantly in favour eh, of the nationalists okay, so, and the separatists. So if you're not worried, in terms of, have another referendum. I don't you want to go through it. that division all over again. The issues that it creates for families and communities, for businesses, for investment. We know what that was like back in 2014. It's we were not told division just you fear, though, it's defeat. No, it's absolutely the division. This debate separated and, and divided families and businesses and communities. We don't need that when we should be focused on pulling together, working together. I want the Scottish Government and the UK Government to work together to deliver for the people of Scotland. How can the not people to have a focused. referendum? Well, Angus, you know very well, eight years ago, there was a very clear, there was a a very clear decision. It was a gold standard, according to Nicola Sturgeon, to have a referendum on the future of Scotland's place within the United Kingdom. And the people of Scotland decided to remain part of the United Kingdom. And the SNP told us at that time they, would, res the they, would, respect, they would respect the vote and they have not now respected the vote. How can the people have a referendum? Angus, you wouldn't expect me, as a full UK uh, politician, someone who believes in Scotland's place in the United Kingdom, to tell you how to separate our country. In the same way, I wouldn't expect you to outline a route map for Scotland to remain part of the Union. But do remember, just eight years ago we had this debate Let's put that to one side and now focus on the really important issues that are affecting it's individuals no and communities union. across the country. Right, well, let me turn now to Anna Sawa, Labour's leader here in Scotland. Um, Labour has made clear that it won't agree to Indi the second independence referendum. You're no different from the Tories, are you? Well, look, the difference is this, is that I don't think there is. I know there's not a majority in favour for a referendum over the course of the next year. There's not a majority in favour of independence, but neither is there a majority in favour of the status quo. There That's is a, a majority. Fudge, though, isn't it? No, no, there is a majority for change across this country, and I can actually recognise. What does that why, mean, though? No, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you directly what it means is I can understand why people in this country feel frustrated and angry with a lying, cheating, morally bankrupt, economically illiterate Tory government. What Angus wants to pretend is that anger's only in Edinburgh or in Glasgow. That anger's in Liverpool, Birmingham, Manchester, Cardiff. And we have got to demonstrate that that change is possible. Possible, and that's by booting out this Tory government and electing a Labour government that's going to work in the interests of Scotland and the UK. That's actually the biggest thing that Angus Roberts and the SNP fear, and that's actually why you have this strategy around a general election, because they have no answer to that big thing. They have the bogeyman of the Conservative Party, and I accept, I agree with Angus about everything that's wrong with this Conservative government, but that, right. is, that is not and representative of the United Kingdom, and, do you and that's why we need change. OK, do you also agree that circumstances have changed since the last 
independence referendum because the Tories have taken the UK, including Scotland, out of the EU. Look, I, I don't support us having left the European Union. That so you was sympathise a, with that, that was a That was a catastrophic decision, and on that I'm sure Angus and I would agree. But that does not mean that we replace Tory chaos with SNP chaos, independence does not mitigate Brexit. It multiplies the impact of Brexit. The majority of our trade with the rest of this, with the world, pales into insignificance compared to the trade we do with the rest of the United Kingdom. All those challenges, I bet if Angus Robertson, the platform they have set out in the economic paper, if they stood on that platform in 2014 to say we'd have a separate currency and leave the UK pound, and that we'd have a trade border between Scotland and England, I don't think they would, ha they would have been brave enough to resolve okay. that in 2014. I just don't buy it. But change is possible. As I put to Douglas, which is if you're so confident of your argument on the union, let them have their referendum and you wouldn't be denying them democracy. But, but Cathy, it would be wrong to suggest that referendums don't have any consequence. Look at the Brexit referendum. It had consequence for our country. Look at the independence referendum. Yes, the result might not have gone in Angus's uh, favour, but it did have consequence for our country. Would it divide the people across this country? It took focus away from the big issues right now. And I hate to break it to Angus. See whether you voted yes or no, or whether you support independence or not. Your energy bills are still going up and you're worried about your mortgage. You're still languishing on an NHS waiting list because his government are not focusing on it. Okay. One in seven Scots on NHS waiting list. Angus doesn't want to talk about that. He'd rather talk about flags. OK, but a lot of your voters, Labour voters, want a referendum. Well, look, I am, I am appealing to people, I'm appealing to people right across this country to say we might ultimately disagree with the final destination for Scotland. I don't support independence. I don't support a referendum. We might ultimately disagree on the final destination. But a vast majority of us in Scotland and across the UK do agree that we need to get rid of this Tory government. Let's go on that part of the journey together. And How that's, a, ca that's, a, case, a, that's a case for change that we're going to make right across I, the country. I'd love you to debate Angus, with these people. Angus, Angus, get a Angus, referendum Angus wants on to pretend, the future. Angus I'm asking a question. To, Angus wants to pretend he's now the presenter of Channel 4 News. Uh, he, 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 might no that he might want that job eventually, but he's not the... Well, next time, perhaps you'll agree to a discussion amongst well, the three of you. We're happy to do that, but Angus is <laughs> Unfortunately, my colleagues <laughs> here don't. We do Gentlemen, believe in democracy. It Gentlemen, is a blocking union. a referendum. Gentlemen, you can continue this argument in the pub. Thank you all very much <laughs> for joining us now. And apologies if you heard some offensive language from the crowd behind us during that discussion.